series, and now you got the big guy going tonight, the man leading this league in strikeouts. He's been dominant uh, this year in certain starts, and at other times, uh, not so good, but his one loss record is very misleading. Uh, in his last 10 starts, I think the Padres have won like seven of them, but Andy's only got a couple of wins. They're going to get this guy signed to a multi-year contract if this club changes ownership? Well, probably if it changes ownership, yes. That would be my guess. If not, then I would say no. Okay, Chris, we know about Andy Bennis. The Reds have seen him. John Smiley goes tonight, the winningest pitcher on this staff, and, and going after win number 12. Well, John Smiley's getting better and better as the year goes on. You know, if you look at his ERA, it's getting worse, but if you look at his one-loss record, it's getting better. Bottom line is Reds are scoring more runs for him. In fact, they're averaging over six runs per game for John Smiley. He's gutting it out even on games when he doesn't have his best stuff. So that's a John Smiley you expect to see. A Reds win here last night while a dramatic Dodger comeback in the ninth on a Delano DeShields home run to beat the Houston Astros. The Reds are back in first place by a half game and attempt to stay there. Well, that's what you want to do is be in first place. You want to stay in first place, especially with the strike looming. You don't know how, what you're going to do except watch the scoreboard and play your own game as hard as you can. Again, it's John Smiley for the Reds. It's Andy Bennis for the San Diego Padres. Chris and Bob will be back with the lineups and the play-by-play -play action in just a moment. And tonight's game is brought to you by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. By your local Lincoln Mercury dealers. By JTM Quality Frozen Meats. Grill them. You'll love them. And by your local 76 dealers who invite you to go with the spirit. The spirit of 76. No surprises. Kevin Mitchell, though, back in a cleanup spot. I don't know if that will slow down his running game at all. Jeff Branson again at third base with Tony Fernandez uh, out of town. And Eddie Taubensey, a left-handed hitter, will be behind the plate against Andy Bennett. Big Andy Bennis on the mound. You know, you know, you get what you expect when you see Andy Bennis, Bob. Hard fastball, devastating slider. When he's on, he can be, as you said in the open, quite dominant. But you're not so sure which Andy Bennis you're going to see from time to time. One thing you will see for sure is a lot of strikeouts. Even when he's not on, he seems to collect the punch outs. This year he really has, and uh, the slider you mentioned, I think, is the, the main pitch for him. When he first joined the Padres uh, several years ago, he had a very poor breaking ball, and so he's developed that slider, and it really has become his strikeout pitch. His fastball is good, as you mentioned, but he doesn't throw as hard as a Rob Dibble say. You know, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's in the low 90s, but he locates it well, and when he does, that's when he's tough. Interesting thing about Andy Bennis, as I look through his this year's stats, he has no hit batsman so far this year, and he's a guy that told me earlier in the year when, when the Reds first came through town. One of the reasons he doesn't hit a lot of batters is that he pitches inside from the first inning on. He lets the opposing team know that he's not afraid to come inside. And that way, they're not as likely to dive out over the plate and get hit by a pitch. And the Padres uh, under pitching coach Sonny Seabird actually work on that, pitching inside. So uh, they don't hit hitters because they're used to pitching inside. Uh, when they throw in between starts, every third pitch they throw has to be inside. Well, it's worked so far and the work for Bennis. Well, here's Deion Sanders. He'll try to get something started for Cincinnati. Stole a couple of bases last night. Also got thrown out on uh, the one really good throw by catcher Brad Osmus. Well, went after that first pitch of fastball, and that's strike one. Deion's been working on his bunning game. You know, when, when the Reds acquired Deion Sanders, they knew they got an outstanding athlete in him, but he is still learning some of the finer points of baseball at this level and bunting is one of the things with his type of speed he could really get the job done. And booted by Biff Roberts on the off-speed pitch. Dion's going to go to second. So you rarely see Biff Roberts make that kind of error. Biff generally with very good hands and obviously fooled on that one. One of the things you have to do on natural grass is keep your feet moving, charge the ball so that you don't get it right there in between hop. That's what Bip tried to do, and on this infield, it'll eat you up. Well, the Padres had gone four straight games without an error, which was their longest streak of the year. They quickly ended that streak. Here's Barry Larkin. And he wants to talk to Brian Johnson. So far this year, the Padres have had a lot of teams that have a lot of problem with teams that have a good running game. Montreal really drove the Padres uh, crazy, beat San Diego all 12 games uh, this season, and Cincinnati's running game certainly was a big factor last night. That's one of the things that Jim Riggleman has said when the Reds came in town. Watch the running game, try to keep the speedsters off the bases, and, you know, it's Deion Sanders and Larry Larkin that ignite the offense. 
pops up the bunt, and Brian Johnson makes the play. Boy, as few times as you see, you may seem see Bip Roberts make an error like that to lead the game off. Rarely do you ever see Barry Larkin bunt the ball straight up to the catcher. So the Padres get a break there as Larkin pops up to Brian Johnson, and now it's up to Hal Morris. Morris reminds me a lot of Tony Gwynn. I mean, a really good hitter who spent a lot of time in the batting cage. I got here early this afternoon, and Morris was going up for early hitting, and that was mid-afternoon. Kind of like Tony Gwynn, he can never get enough practice. And there's the results of all that hard work. Well, the two top hitters in the National League in terms of hits in this ball game. Morris is second to Gwynn. Interesting that both those hitters, is, as fine as they are, both had off nights last night. How Morris will go through kind of a funk like that oh, once a month, once every three weeks or so, where he doesn't look too good at the plate. He'll come out early the next day, almost inevitably, and see if he can't fix whatever problem it was. Takes a ball from Andy Bennis. Now, you see the Cincinnati Reds almost every day. We only see uh, in San Diego the Reds when they come here and when the Padres go to Cincinnati. But to see him leading the team and runs batted in was maybe the biggest surprise to us. Well, last year he had his team, had his career high at 59. And he blew right on by that at the mid-year point. So Hal Morris, of course, it's a result of a number of things, Bob. He's getting a lot of hits, first of all, and he's healthy this year. And he's driving the ball more than he has in years past, even though he has quite a few singles. The other part of it is he's got men on base in front of him. That's what you need for RBIs. Yeah, and they can both run. Uh, the two in front of him tonight, Sanders and Larkin. That's a strike. And a throw down by Brian Johnson. Brad Osmus, who uh, caught last night, was very unhappy with all the stolen bases and actually asked for tonight off so he could work on his mechanics before the game. And they spent maybe 45 minutes with Brad Osmus throwing early this afternoon. Brian Johnson doing the catching tonight. How about the earring in that ex-Stanford Cardinal? I wonder if he wore that when he played up, up north. Well, now they've got Deion Sanders. The terrorist to Shipley, who tags out Deion. And then I realize that the Craig Shipley might actually be the fastest of all the Padre players. And he was able to tag out Dion, who got caught off second on that hot shot to Bennis. Bad base running by Deion Sanders and a ball up the middle. Make sure it goes by the pitcher before you try to advance the third base. He's hung out the dry, and the Padres, good execution to get this run down with that Morris able to go to second base. So Dion retired, two gone, and it's up to Kevin Mitchell. Well, Mitchell's hit more home runs against the Padres than he has any other team in the National League. But he pops this one up. Who's got it? Gutierrez is calling. And catches. So that's the final out in the first. The uh, Reds unable to take advantage of the two base here. And after a half inning, Cincinnati nothing. The Padres coming up. Against left-hander John Smiley tonight. No surprise with the first four. Bill Clark, a right-handed hitter, gets the start against the left-hander Smiley. And Brian Johnson doing the catching in place of Brad Osmus. Ricky Gutierrez still at shortstop. Louis Lopez, who had won the job, is out with a bad left shoulder. Lopez can hit left-handed but not right-handed. Right. His bad shoulder, so he'll not play against the left-hander Smiley. There's Big John. Been outstanding here in the second part of the year. As you look at his ERA, though, he started out with a 2.9 ERA in April, and it's been slowly creeping up every month. The month of July, his ERA is over four. But the good part about it is the Reds scoring a lot of runs. His run support this year, 6.2 runs per game. You can win with those kind of offense behind you. Well, this is his first start this year against San Diego. The Roberts to lead it off, and that drive to right field is fair. It's going to roll into the bullpen. Nice bounce in right field, though, for Reggie Sanders to hold Bip to a double. You know, Chris, a lot of people aren't aware of the unusual ground rule here at San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium. A ball that goes and bounces under those benches in the bullpen is in play. You have to dig it out. It's not a ground rule double. We saw Tony win the first night in. Now, you see, Reggie Sanders is getting some cooperation from the pitchers down there. They're moving the chairs for him. When Tony Gwynn went down there the other night, they didn't. They got out of the way, but they left the chairs behind. He had to clear his own chairs out of the way. Teamwork. 
Speaking <laughs> of Gwynn, here he is. And Tony, who has a batting average of over 300 against almost every pitcher, is under 200 against Smiley. Usually you see a, a batter in this situation with a man on second and nobody out. It's up to the hitter to move the man to third base. But I think with Tony Gwynn up there, you expect him to drive the run in. And Tony this year is driving in runs uh, better than he ever has in his career. And he leads the Padres in RBI, 61. To left center field. But playable for Mitchell. And the Roberts cannot advance. That's one thing Tony sometimes has trouble with getting that runner from second to third because he doesn't pull the ball that well and doesn't try to pull the ball. Here's Derek Bell. Derek's batting average is up there, but the power has not been there as much as the Padres would like this year. Well, he's got 12 home runs on the year, 44 RBIs. Has a chance to be a 2020 man, has 21 stolen bases. He's a very aggressive base runner, likes to run, and takes a ball from John Smiley. I guess when you look at his numbers, though, what you really pops out at you is his 81 strikeouts. He takes a big swing. And has trouble laying off that high fastball. Not unusual among hitters. That's the ball, 2 and 0. One thing you get with Derrick Bell, though, if you watch him day after day, never loafs on a ground ball. Runs hard on every play. Didn't get the breaking ball, and it's 2 and 1. John Smiley's got a couple of different types of breaking ball. His his hard breaking ball is a slider, and his other breaking ball is really a changeup. Although it goes down so much, it looks like a left-handed curveball. That's a pitch that frequently gives the Padres a lot of trouble, and that's a check swing foul, two and two to Derek Bell. Smiley, much like Benison, as much as he likes to pitch inside, especially the right-handed hitters. Both of them feel like if they can establish themselves inside with the fastball, they can go outside to get the hitters out. Pirates have never had much success against John Smiley, whether he was pitching for the Pirates or now at the Reds. He's four in one lifetime against San Diego. Tried to get him on the outside corner, able to hold up, and now the count is full. Cliff Roberts in scoring position at second. There's no score. We're in the first inning. On a beautiful night for baseball in San Diego. Hit well to left field, and he got that one into the permanent seat. Well, Derek Bell, his 13th home run of the year, drives two in here in the first inning. Talk about his home run power, something that they like to see more of here out of San Diego. The big native of Tampa unleashed that John Smiley fastball. Look how he cocks his hips, keeps his head right on the ball, the flip of his wrist, and this ball would have been a home run even before they moved the fences in. <laughs> Nobody ever said he wasn't strong. As is Eddie Williams, who takes a strike. He's telling everybody how he did it. Pretty well hit the center field. That's a long run for Dion, and he can't get it. Up against the fence. Eddie Williams will scheme into second with a double. Well, the Reds have done a terrific job pitching to Eddie Williams in the first two games of this series. Eddie 0 for 8. And in truth, he'd been the Padres' most productive hitter in terms of producing runs. But the Reds have been pitching him inside, Chris, and having success. Well, they've been pitching him inside, and they've been changing speeds on him quite a bit. And I think that's one of the main things for, for to try to get Eddie Williams out. There you see Davey Johnson, Don Gullett, wondering what's going on with John Smiley. Giving up three base hits, all of them 
extra base hits. That was the ninth double of the year for Eddie Williams. Yeah, the only hitter who didn't really hit the ball hard was Tony Gwynn. Here's Phil Clark. Hot shot. Pass the dive of Jeff Branson. And Eddie Williams will stop at third. Well, the difference between these two clubs, Bob, is that one is in a pennant race and one is trying to be the spoiler. And having played on teams that were in both of those positions, you tend to tighten up a little bit. Looks like John Smiley's getting those pitches up in the strike zone. Phil Clark will make you pay. That's the fourth hard hit ball here in the first inning. Phil Clark last year did a terrific job for the Padres. Hit over 300. Had the highest batting average of any uh, pinch hitter who had over uh, 30 at bats. This year he'd been slumping some, but he hit that one hard. And here's Craig Shipley. Shipley knows slouch versus left handers, bats 375. Takes the ball. By the way, the distance on Derek Bell's home run, 392 feet. As a pitcher, you like to see the distance of the home run put on the board, huh? <laughs> I like to see if they're going to hit home runs, see them be solo shots. <laughs> Actually, as a pitcher, you're proud when you give up a real long one. What you hate to see are the, are the fence scrapers. Ah, yeah, they count just as much, too. But they hurt more. <laughs> yeah, they do. One and one to Craig Shipley, by far having his best year in the majors, and he takes a good fastball for strike two. Some of the Padre coaches feel Craig Shipley is actually the best athlete on the team. You mentioned he was one of the fastest men in the yeah. infield. That, surprises me, yeah. and as much as Bip Roberts, the second base, you would naturally think would be the fastest in the infield. Fouled away by Craig. Well, Shipley is one of those guys you can put him at third or short or second, or put him in left field or center field. He's played all those positions. And this year he's hitting him. He's batting average 333 coming into the game. And Smiley keeping an eye on Phil Clark, who rarely runs. Two to nothing Padres in the first inning. Popped up. Deion Sanders. And no chance for Eddie Williams to score from third. So that's the second out of the inning. Runners still at first and third. The old Stanford quarterback, Brian Johnson, Johnson, coming up against John Smiley. Well, if Smiley can get Johnson, he would have gotten out of this inning cheaply enough, I would say. Well, just the home run by Derek Bell would have been the only damage, but he's got his work cut out for him. Brian Johnson, an outstanding year last year in Las Vegas. Well, the only hitter in the San Diego organization who hit for a higher average was Tony Gwynn. That's the ball. Brian actually uh, told me he entertained thoughts of trying to play both sports, football and uh, baseball, but he was a quarterback at Stanford. I can't imagine playing a quarterback in the NFL and Major League Baseball. There are some seasons that would, over part of the season would overlap. Certainly if you're a quarterback, it would be tough to catch up on. Pops this one up, swung late, but it's going to reach the seats down the first baseline. I think given the number of players that have the opportunity to play both baseball and football, the majority of them choose baseball. I guess once you put the pinstripes on or the cleats on, the baseball cleats, that is, if, and you you play, there must be something more romantic about that than being hit by a 250-pound linebacker. Funny you should mention that because that's what the sway, Brian Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> You just saw one of the better two-sport players, Deion Sanders, in center, and that's in there for a strike. One and two. Speaking of two sports, the Chargers opened their exhibition season today. Yeah, that was against uh, Atlanta, so Deion's uh, old team. Hit the right field. Reggie Sanders, though, has a bead, and that's the final out of the inning. So Johnson hit it hard, but Reggie Sanders is there. The Padres get a couple. They leave two on after a full inning. Two nothing, San Diego. 
Zulch, 2 0 Padres as we go to the top of the second inning. And for the Reds, it'll be Brett Boone, Reggie Sanders, and Jeff Franson against right hander Andy Bennis. Well, Brett Boone, look at the RBI production out of the second base slot. Not bad. Double digits in each month. Brett Boone also supplies some power. He can he can go deep along with that. The home runs, five in the month of May, none in June. Looks like in every other month for Brett. Can't wait to get into August. Drive to center field. And a base hit for Brett Boone. The thing that jumped out to me about Brett Boone the first time I saw him is the bat speed. He really takes a cut. Well, you know, a lot of people say, well, look, gee, look at the stance he has. He holds the bat over his head. He's not way he's going to hit this National League pitching where they like to bust him inside. But one thing remarkable about Brett Boone is that he's hit right-handed pitching much better than he has left-handed pitching. That high fastball by Bennis, Boone, he just turns it around. So Brett's at first, and here's Reggie Sanders. And there goes Brett Boone, a throw down by Johnson. Have they got Boone in a rundown? And the throw hits Brett. Well, a break for the Reds as long as Boone is not injured. That was not a base running mistake. It was a, probably a hit and run, although with Reggie Sanders up, that's a dangerous play because he has a tendency to swing and miss. Boone's stuck in the pickle right here. He, this is like the old backyard stuff. He's going to try to get out of it. The ball hits him right on the left arm there. Squirts away. He'll make it the second base. And Biff Roberts will get charged with another error, his second of the game. And that's a ball to Reggie Sanders, one and one. So it officially goes as a caught stealing and an error four. Didn't get the breaking ball. One and two. And time called. Andy Bennis, uh, early in his career especially, had that huge leg kick, and base stealers uh, had a field day against Andy. He doesn't lift that leg quite as much now, and he's worked on holding runners. But good base runners can still steal on Andy. Well, with Johnson catching, Bennis has had a better report of keeping runners at first base, or at least keeping them from stealing. Johnson's thrown out now more than 50% of the runners that have tried to steal off Bennis. With Osmus catching, it's down around 36%, but still, that's better than Brad's overall average. Foul down the third baseline, and so the count holds two and two to Reggie Sanders. If a catcher can throw out somewhere between 35 and 40 percent of the runners that steal, that's a pretty good average. When you get down below 30 percent, you could use some improvement. So Reggie with a count of two and two against Andy Bennis. And Andy missed with the slider, so now the count's full three and two. Dennis generally pretty good control, doesn't walk that many, and averaging 10 strikeouts for every nine innings. And he gets Reggie Sanders. Well, for Andy Dennis, that's his first strikeout of the night. Well, very nice for Davey Johnson to put a replacement player in to play third base and have this kind of offensive production out of him. A hanging breaking ball. Jeff Branson likes it and curls this home run right inside the right field pole. That gave the Reds a 2-0 lead at that point in the first inning. That's the kind of home run you were talking about that you hate. Huh? <laughs> Just over that inner fence. Just the fence <laughs> scraper. Yeah, Branson's hit five home runs this year. This fly ball is to left field. The long run for Phil Clark in foul territory, actually out of our view, but he caught it. So a nice play by Phil Clark. Not that easy to run in behind the field level seats and make the catch. Well, we think it was a nice play. We couldn't see it. One of the unusual things about Jack Murphy Stadium from home plate, you can't see it, but we're going to take a look at this from 
the right field angle and right up against the wall. Clark makes a good play. Now he has to come out around that corner before he throws home. <laughs> Unusual dimensions here at Jack Murphy Stadium. Strange ground rules. Well, here's Ed Taubensy. And he takes a ball. Lonnie Smith was playing left field here one day. I forget which team he was with. It was just a couple of years ago, and the ball rolled underneath the uh, bullpen benches, and he waved his arms to the umpires. Ground rule double. <laughs> Meanwhile, the hitter circled the bases nah. for a home run. <laughs> and that slider misses, so it's 2 and 0 to Taubensy. Well, the pitcher's up next, John Smiley. First base open, but the Padres are leading two to nothing. We're only in the second inning. Ball three. Would you pitch around a hitter this early in the game? No, I, I think that uh, I would not. I want to get Taubensy out, but I think what Venice is doing is not trying to just throw him right down the middle. You know that, that Eddie Taubensy's got some home run power and doesn't want to make a mistake that's going to cost him two runs. But he clearly pitched around Eddie in that situation. So with two outs, He's going to get the pitcher up instead of trying to get the number eight hitter out and then having the pitcher lead off the inning. So Tobinsey walks on four pitches, two on, two out. Smiley the hitter. Padre pitchers might uh, approach it a little differently than the Cincinnati pitchers in the sense the Reds, with a terrific offensive team, score a lot of runs. Generally, two runs is not going to beat them. Well, you, but you, the Padre pitchers don't pitch with that luxury. Well, you try to stay out of a big inning, certainly against any team you have, and. My philosophy has always been the more guys you get on base, the more opportunity for the team to score. John Smiley can swing the bat. And it's a ball one to Smiley. Smiley's knocked in one run this year. His batting average is 188. And Dennis has now missed on six straight pitches, and Brian Johnson will go to the mound to talk to him. Now, what, what will a catcher say to a pitcher in this spot? I think that John Smiley, or that... Andy Bennis is just rushing a little bit, not really getting to his balance point. And I think that Brian Johnson just ran out there to, to tell him, hey, slow down a little bit, throw me a strike. Remember, this is the pitcher up there. When you're a rookie like Johnson, you're going to go out to talk to Bennis. I'm not sure what you can say that Bennis doesn't already know. Here's a 2-0 to Smiley, and he went after it. That foul ball is going to reach the seats. Maybe he told him where he could get an earring like that. <laughs> he probably just wanted to slow him down, ease <laughs> things off a little bit. Yeah, there it is. Oh. Yeah, Benito Santiago used to wear an earring like that. He got, Benito Santiago had the other earring of that pair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, see, it's cheaper that way. <laughs> you don't wear them both at the same time, so... Two and one to Smiley with Boone at second. Tom and C at first. Two nothing Padres and Smiley couldn't catch up with the fastball. It's two and two. If you're wondering about the Astros and the Dodgers, that game just about to get underway up at Dodger Stadium. More exciting ball game last night. Delano to Shields with two out in the ninth. John Hudek gave up the three run home run. The Shields what his second home run of the year. Came at a good time for Cincinnati. And for the Dodgers, that's ball three. Be interesting what kind of effect that has on John Hudick. He has really had a pretty much a season of clear sailing so far. But to give up a lead like that in the middle of a pennant race, interesting to see what he'll do now is in the next few times out. Runners will be going. 3-2 pitch. And Andy Bennis walks down smiling. So that rolls him up for Deion Sanders. Or back to back walks for Bennis, something very uncharacteristic for the big right hander. The second of those walks to the pitcher. Sonny Seabird doesn't like it, and he's on his way out to the mound. Well, Houston and the Dodgers, that's a big game, obviously, for both those ball clubs and for Cincinnati. But the Dodgers, if they lose that game, will drop out of first place, a percentage point back of San Francisco because the Giants this afternoon beat the Colorado Rockies 6-4. to four. Well, that Rocky team, not the same with Anders Galarraga oh, in the lineup. Oh, boy, they had a terrific one-two punch with uh, Bichette and Galarraga. And those are the updated standings, including the games this afternoon. But if the Dodgers lose, the 
Giants will have one more win, one more loss, and a higher percentage. Of course, that fact that Colorado out of the Colorado lineup is of a concern for Reds fans because Colorado goes into Houston. And, of course, Reds fans would like to see Colorado beat up on Houston. The Rockies were just in San Diego, and uh, that to shut Colorado one-two punch. I mean, not, not too many are better in baseball right now. And put them in Mile High Stadium, and you really see some fireworks. Ooh. Well, here's Deion Sanders with the bases loaded. Padres up 2 nothing, and Deion takes the ball. So Andy up with his pitches and having problems right now. Deion in the first inning reached on a ground ball that kicked off the glove of Biff Roberts for an error. That's a strike. One and one to Dion. Terry Tata calling the balls and strikes tonight. And you see the rest of the umpires. Breaking ball hit well to left center, but Derek Bell will run this down, and that's the final out of the inning. So. The Reds leave the bases loaded in the second. We'll be back after this word from your local station. For a big treat on Farmer's Night, August 6th, when the Reds meet the Braves at 8.05. Hungry ticket holders have a chance to win tasty microwavable hot sandwiches and a Sunbeam gas grill. Reds food pack featuring fan food favorites such as Gold Star Chili, Coca-Cola, Frisch's Restaurants, and Cons. Hundreds of dollars in Kroger grocery certificates and Bushnell binoculars, the eyes of the sports fan from Bosch and Loam. It's a great Reds actions, prizes, and surprises on Reds Farmers Night, August the 6th, game time, 8.05. Postcard entries are accepted. A couple of fans enjoying the food here at Jack Murphy Stadium. I think the local uh, uh, dental association passed out that cotton candy. Huh? <laughs> Along with toothbrushes. Yeah. Ricky Gutierrez hits one well to right field. Reggie Sanders has room right up against the fence. Ricky Gutierrez has pretty good power to the opposite field, and you saw it there. That ball was hit about 360 feet. Well, if John Smiley's fooling anybody, we haven't found him in the Padres lineup yet. Maybe it'll be Andy Bennis, the, the pitcher. Hard hit balls galore. Only two runs in for the Padres so far. So here's Andy Bennis. He's knocked in seven runs this year. Andy takes a big swing and hopes that pitch will run into his bat. <laughs> takes a strike. Bennis actually has come up with a couple of big hits this year. the ball but when you pitch as many innings as he does I guess the uh, law of averages huh? you're going to have lots of at bats he's got four home runs now closing in on the Padre home run record held by a pitcher former teammate of mine Tim Lawler back you and Tim came to the Padres on the same deal that's strike two one and two we well, had who else uh, Rupert Jones Rupert and, Jones uh, and Joe LaFay Joe LaFay yeah that was a good trade for the Padres. They sent uh, Jerry Mumphrey and uh, John Pacella to the Yankees. Good memory. A good trade for the Padres. Would you tell Marty Brenneman that on the way out of here? <laughs> this copyrighted telecast is presented courtesy of Multimedia Entertainment, Inc. by the authority of the Cincinnati Reds and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, transmission, and or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds is prohibited. So two outs, nobody on, and Pip Roberts is the batter. Fouls it away. Pip first pitch swinging here. He got a fastball on the first pitch, his last at bat to lead the game off for the Padres in the bottom of the first line to double down the right field line. Smiley started him off with a changeup. And off the glove of Reggie Sanders, and Dick Roberts will have his second double of the game. Well, when that ball was hit, Chris, I didn't think Reggie Sanders had any chance at all, and he came uh, fairly close to catching it. Well, Reggie Sanders has outstanding speed, excellent outfield abilities and instinct, and he comes in here, almost makes a super catch. I don't think he quite got his glove down in time. This is a diving catch that maybe you make, maybe you don't. The good thing about it is that he kept it in front of him and not let it get down there into the Reds bullpen where it would rattle around, and Roberts may have had at least three or four. Yeah, if you dive for a ball and it gets past you and rolls down there, you're in trouble in right field. 
Ball one to Tony Gwynn. That was Robert's 14th double of the season. So Tony Gwynn came into the game with a 22 percentage point lead over Jeff Bagwell of Houston for the National League uh, batting lead. A 388 average coming into the game. Fouled it away, one and one. And you see the numbers. A lot of talk about Tony hitting 400. Yes, Tony, he says, no, I don't think I will. But if I'm close in September and we're still playing, talk to me then. That's a foul ball, one and two. His average is slumped towards the last part of the last several seasons. Of course, his knees aren't what they used to be. He doesn't get the infield hits that he used to. And I remember a time when Tony Gwynn would be just as likely to drop a bun as he would to swing away. But rarely do you see that anymore with Tony. No, he doesn't get any leg hits anymore. That uh, knee really bothers him. And he hasn't finished the last three years because of injuries. The left center field. Uh, Kevin Mitchell is there. So the Padres don't take advantage of the two-out double by Jeff Roberts. The runner left in second after two at the Murph in San Diego. It's the Padres two, the Red Two nothing Padres in the third inning, and you can always bank on Bank One for a great Reds giveaway. And 94 is no exception. On Friday, August 5th, the Reds meet the Braves at 7:35. The first 15,000 fans in attendance, 18 and older, will receive a Reds athletic bag, compliments of Bank One, the official bank of the Cincinnati Reds. Don't forget to apply for the new Reds Visa card when you attend a home game at the Reds or when you visit a Bank One location. The Reds and the Braves and a free Reds athletic bag on Bank One night. Coming up Friday, August 5th at 7.35. It'll be Barry Larkin, Hal Morris, Kevin Mitchell in the top of the third inning for Cincinnati. The Reds down 2-0 to the Padres in the third game of this series. And Bennis misses the outside corner, ball one. Bob, I think our director, Brian Seit, must be hungry. After every break, we come back and show concessionaires selling food. That's because, see, he, in the truck, he can sit there and eat while he uh, rests. Yeah. Bouncer pass, Bennis. It's Ricky Gutierrez with the play. And Larkin is the first half. Ricky lost his starting job at shortstop. He was making too many errors after a very good rookie season last year. And Louis Lopez took over, but Lopez out with that bad left shoulder right now. Ricky back in, and he'd like to prove that he should stay back in. Dennis and Hal Morris. Pretty good match up here. And that's a strike to Morris. Dennis last year against the Reds pitched outstanding baseball and three starts was one and one gave up only three earned runs in those starts. This year the Reds have had their way with Dennis in the one outing he had against them. One ball one strike to Morris. The team that Andy has really been dominating uh, this year has been the New York Mets. 1-1 one, one pitch. Bouncer to work Biff Roberts should be an easy play. And Morris is the second half. For instance, uh, in his last 17 innings against the Mets, he's given up three hits and struck out 27. So two outs, nobody on. And Big Mitch will come up. Well, Mitch is one of uh, only a dozen players to reach the second deck here at San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium in left field. He takes a strike. I don't know if he's the strongest man in the league, but he's got to rank among them. The left center field and off the wall. So Mitch will cruise into second with a stand-up double. And Dennis is thankful that uh, Kevin Mitchell didn't lift that one in the air. Well, he had plenty of juice behind that ball, just not enough altitude here. Trying to get the fastball inside, you better get it in farther than that. Unjammed by Kevin Mitchell against the 370 sign, and that ball was like a laser beam. Well, Mitch uh, now has 10 hits against Andy Bennis, and four of those 10 hits have been home runs. Here's Brett Boone. Of course, in San Diego, we heard an awful lot about Brett Boone years ago because his grandfather, Ray Boone, longtime scout for the Boston Red Sox, lives in San Diego, said, keep an eye out on my grandson. 
He was right. Yeah. Shows you what good scout he was. Well, Ray was a terrific hitter when he played for the Cleveland Indians, Detroit Tigers. That's a strike, and it's one and one to Brett Boone. What a great baseball family. Oh, we yes. all know what Brett Boone has done for the offense and defense for the Reds, but this fellow right there, Bob Boone, his work with the catchers, his work with the pitchers even, as far as the strategy of pitching, has just been outstanding. That's the ball, and it's two and one. Actually, we're lucky to have Bob Boone still with us. He's been rumored in a number of cities as the, a potential managerial candidate. Just a matter of time before he manages in the big leagues. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it's next year. Well hit to right field. Tony Gwynn will look up. That ball's gone. Big seat. Well, we showed you a graphic earlier in the game about Brett Boone. Every other month he hits a home run. He didn't have any in July. He was waiting. Or he had four in July, none in June. Now he's got five. Fred Boone gets the Reds even in a hurry. So he, in August is approaching. See, so the, well, maybe the blank month is approaching. He wants to get as many as he can in July. Does he normally have that much power to right field? Yeah, he hits a lot of things to right field, and he's got a good, solid swing. You mentioned his bat speed, and that's what it takes to hit the ball out going the opposite field. Brett Boone. You know, he looks small in stature, but he is well-built, solid young man. And he now has 10 home runs and 62 runs batted in. And it's one ball, one strike to Reggie Sanders. I think a lot of ball clubs will take 62 RBIs out of their second baseman this time of year. Oh, yeah, they take that for the whole year. You know, for the trade that brought Brett Boone over to Cincinnati, Eric Hansen was in that trade. They sent Bobby Ayala and Dan Wilson over there, and certainly it's worked out for the Reds. Hansen has turned out to be one of the best starters on the Reds rotation. You know what Boone's done, and it's worked out somewhat for the Seattle Mariners as well. Bobby Ayala being used as the stopper, doing a pretty good job. Dan Wilson getting a lot of catching over there, although he's not hitting yet. Yeah, the, the, uh, Seattle was looking for a closer, and Ayala has filled that bill. That's a ball, two and two. Padres share the same spring training complex with the Seattle Mariners in uh, Peoria, Arizona. Brand new facility this year. Don't you miss that garden spot of Yuma? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Only three hours from San Diego. That's a ball, three and two. Do you have a favorite restaurant there? <laughs> There's a restaurant there named Orietta's that they serve. They, the service is absolutely wonderful until it's time to get the check. And you can't find Orietta anywhere, and she keeps you there for hours. Three, two, pitch, and down goes Reggie Sanders for the second time of the game. Dennis gets him with a slider. That's his second strikeout. But the Reds on a two-run homer by Brett Boone. Tie it in a 2-2 in the middle of the third. Con's Baseball Card Day has always been a Reds favorite, just like Con's Hot Dogs. So plan to get both on Con's Baseball Card Day coming up on Sunday, August 7th, when the Reds and Braves score off a 215. Each fan in attendance will receive a free set of 94 Reds Baseball Cards, compliments of Con's, the official hot dog of the Cincinnati Reds. That's the Reds and Braves and a free set of baseball cards from Con's on Reds Baseball Card Day, August 7th at 215. Well, Derek Bell had a two-run homer his first time up, but this time a harmless pop to Brett Boone in shallow right field, and that's the first out. One out, nobody on, a 2-2 tie, and John Smiley will go after Eddie Williams. You know, Chris, you think about the sophistication of the scouting in Major League Baseball today, that all the scouts spread around, uh, really all around the world almost, looking for talent. Eddie Williams was playing in a winter baseball league in San Diego, just one of those recreational leagues. And one of the Padre Scots, Randy Johnson, a former big league player, was also in that league. Saw the way Eddie Williams was swinging the bat, recommended the Padres sign him to a minor league contract. And here he is batting cleanup in the big leagues. Wow. High fly to center, and Deion Sanders handles that too gone. Eddie Williams with plenty of power to spare. I'd hate to see him with an aluminum bat in his hand. Ooh. I was just talking to uh, Bob Cluck, who runs the San Diego School of Baseball with uh, Tony Gwynn and a few others. And he said Eddie Williams was a, uh, a pupil in his school when he was nine years old. And he said, boy, you could see the athletic ability then. They've got quite a list of alums oh, that yeah. have gone through the oh, San yeah. Diego School of Baseball. Here's Phil Clark. Ball one. 
Well, Eddie Williams actually was a, a number one draft choice uh, of the New York Mets, the fourth player taken in the draft back in 1983. On the corner, and it's one and one to Phil Clark. Phil's brother, one of his brothers, Gerald, a former Padre in Colorado Rocky, now playing in Japan. Popped up to right field, and an easy inning for John Smiley. That's Reggie Sanders, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for the Reds left-hander. Well, Marty Brenneman will be along to carry you through the fourth, fifth, and sixth. At the end of three, it's a 2-2 tie in San Diego. All right, we go to the top of the fourth inning, and Jeff Brantley, a nice play by Eddie Williams, and quickly on to Andy Bennis. One pitch, one out, at the beginning of inning number four of this two-two ball game. Hi again, everybody. Marty Brenneman along with Bob Chandler and Chris Welsh. Two bombs. Derek Bell, Brett Boone, start from scratch. Brett Boone showing some really unbelievable power going the other way. Mm -hmm. You know, he we all went did. the other way in the Houston series earlier this week at Riverfront. And teams continue to pitch him outside. Yeah. Here's Eddie Tomlinson who did not see a pitch to hit. And he sees one to hit here and smokes that ball, but not well enough. We'll pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds television network. You're watching Reds Baseball on WYMT-TV, Hazard, Kentucky. Two men up, two men down here in the top of the fourth inning of this tie game. John Smiley, who walked in the second. Nice play by the diving Ricky Gutierrez. And if anything, a quicker Cincinnati fourth than it was the San Diego third. Three pitches. It's 2-2 in the middle of the fourth inning. It's a 2-2 game as we move to the bottom of the fourth inning here at Jack Murphy Stadium. Marty Brenneman, Chris Welsh. It looked like John Smiley was really getting a lot of pitches up in the first inning, but comes off of a 1-2-3 third and probably getting it together now. Well, the thing that's interesting about both these ball clubs, the pitcher, Smiley and Bennis, having a little bit of a problem trying to get the ball over the plate in the zones where they want it, but these offensive teams have come out swinging the bat right away. The, the Reds make an easy inning for Andy Bennis on a 1-2-3, 1-2-3 pitches. That's a that's a once in a year thing I, that you're going to see a one two three inning on three pitches. I think Smiley threw five maybe four possibly in the bottom of the third as he works to Craig Shipley Dodgers jump out in front first inning run and they're still batting off of Daryl Kyle Shipley up for the second time he flied out his first time up hit that ball hard but foul and way foul off the back wall of the home bullpen. The remnants of the skunk is still around. Did you and Bob talk about No, that? we didn't talk about the skunk. It was quite an adventure, Ooh. actually right below the television booth here at, at the Murph. Uh, how in the world a skunk would get into the ballpark. Uh, he might have had a ticket to the game, but they had big time problems tracking that rascal down, and uh, he left uh, the remnants of the presence of a skunk here at the ballpark. As they like to do. Absolutely. In the air, shallow, Larkin out, Mitchell in. And two of the stadium attendants, I give them a lot of credit. They hung right with that skunk, chasing him from row to row in one section. And you talk about people disappearing immediately. <laughs> I mean, it was like they were never there. And those the two stadium attendants uh, very delicately removed the skunk, put him in a big plastic trash can, and he's probably joyfully running around in the wild somewhere close. This guy here missed the whole show. Right there. I mean, he didn't want to know anything about anything. Check him out. He might have been overcome by the skunk. <laughs> Check him out. <laughs> he's on East Coast time, that's all. <laughs> he probably is. <laughs> One ball and one strike. Now this was this great camera work here. Check it out. This is before the game. Now here, here they are. Now they're working. Now they are absolutely working. You ever tried to sneak up on a skunk with a beach towel? Not of the four-legged variety. That didn't work. Boom! <laughs> Good play. 
do it with the bat and do it with the glove. Yeah. Four to three, Vip Roberts. Um, rather, Brett Boone to Hal Morris. We talked about how deep he plays at second base, but look how quickly he gets back to his feet to make the throw. That's amazing. That's an Ozzie Smith move right there. Athleticism, bouncing up off the grass and making a good, strong throw to knock off Brian Johnson. Here's Ricky Gutierrez with two out. He opened the second and sent Reggie Sanders back to the wall in right field. One ball, one strike. Make that no, nothing in two. No balls and two strikes on the San Diego shortstop. said with himself he had a pitch get away without a doubt and he drills Gutierrez with an 0 and 2 pitch and Ricky appears to be in in some pain I don't know if you caught John Smiley's reaction watch this well John wants to come in but he doesn't want to come in and hit Gutierrez I don't certainly think not that... the eighth hitter in the lineup and the ball was all over it looked like his right elbow Jim Riggleman going to make sure that Ricky Gutierrez is all right before Andy Bennett steps to the plate. I got his left elbow. Left forearm maybe. So John had an excellent shot at another one two three inning had retired the first two batters on a pop up and a ground out goes 0 and 2 on the 247 batter and drills him with a pitch. Good news is he's got Andy Bennett coming up. Yeah he does. He doesn't look too happy. Well, I hope Ricky doesn't think by any stretch of the imagination that John Smiley was throwing at him. He's giving himself too much credit if he thinks that. Way too much. Thank you. Dennis. Represents the only strikeout John Smiley has had tonight. And he's on his way to possibly another one. Two runs, three hits for Cincinnati, two runs, five hits, and two hours for San Diego. Smiley tries to put Bennis away. Dion couldn't hang on to it. That'll be a base hit. That's the second hit tonight where a Reds outfielder got a glove on the ball but was unable to hang on to it. So Bennis. Gets a single on a two strike pitch moving the lead runner on to third. Well Smiles decides to go after him with fastball. He went up the ladder on him. Nice effort by Deion Sanders but can't come up with it. So now for the third time in four innings John has got to go to work against Bip Roberts and Bip has just eaten up John Smiley so far tonight. Two opposite field doubles. last one was a sinking liner that Reggie Sanders deflected into foul territory on a diving attempt. And here Bip is for the third time with a chance to do some serious damage here. And he gets out in front of ball. Two balls and no strikes. Well, as bad as it is to pitch to a hitter with a man on third and 2 0 count, you'd much rather pitch to Bip Roberts in this situation than the guy on deck. Yeah, even though he's retired, Tony Gwynn twice tonight. 
That means he's due. Yeah. And that should be the inning. No runs a hit. Two men left. John Smiley dodges a two-out bullet. We go to the fifth. It is a two-two tie. Stay with us. Two to the score as we go to the top of the fifth inning, and the Reds have the top of their batting order coming up. For the edification of one Andy Bennis, Deion Sanders, Barry Larkin, and Hal Morris. Now Atlanta falls three and a half games back of Montreal by losing today to Philadelphia while Montreal was beating up on Florida seven to three. And this brings to mind one of the great moments in baseball on this date 12 years ago. You catch my drift 12 years ago. The Braves removed mascot chief Nakahoma from left field at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium to make room for more seats promptly losing 19 of their next 21 ball games to blow a 10 and a half game lead in the NL West. They promptly then restored Chief Nakahoma to his rightful home and regained first place. One of the truly great moments in Major League Baseball history on this very date. Joe Nuxall's birthday. Don't mess with the mascot. That's exactly right. They of course uh, had one of the all time great ones here you and Bob Chandler and I talked about it earlier down on the field and uh, of course at one time he was known as a KGB chicken because it started as a in connection with a radio station here in San Diego and as Dion strikes out he's 0 for 3 now and of course I think everybody knows the impact that uh, Ted Janoulis has made around the country as simply the chicken that's not him and that is a, a poor substitute for the chicken but it's the best that they have to offer under the circumstances. Three strikeouts now for Andy Bennis. The other two have been against Reggie Sanders. Half swing foul by Barry Larkin. Tony Fernandez wife Clara giving birth to a boy born this evening in Florida eight pounds five ounces. They have not yet decided on a name. It is a fourth boy for Tony and Clara Fernandez. And we understand Tony will rejoin the ball club in time for Monday's first of three in San Francisco. All that information courtesy of John Browdy. Thank you, JB. And congratulations to Tony and Clara Fernandez on the birth of their fourth son. Wonderful news. Yes. Barry, a hit into left field. With one out, he's to go ahead run if they can get him around. Take a look at our lineup for our Builder Square square by square play of the game. Next inning, we'll play to see who wins a $100 gift certificate as well as a chance to go to baseball heaven. We'll also tell you how you can enter the game. So check it out. Batter, pitcher, names at all the other positions. And we'll see what we shall see in the next inning. We'll see what we we'll shall see. Yeah, I'll say it real slow for you, Creed. <laughs> we shall see what we shall see. Okay. It's not that tough. That's kind it? of profound for the West Coast. Well, I laid that term on you during a commercial break about you casting aspersions on me, and you looked at me like I was stupid. I don't want any on me. I <laughs> think you did. <laughs> Al Morris. Out of play. Andy Bennis has now thrown 58 pitches in this game, 35, 36 of them strikes. And that's the one the Reds are interested in. Bottom of the second, Dodgers got a first inning run. The Giants roll again today. Reds will be up at the stick beginning on Monday afternoon. Six to four, they win it. Philadelphia. Atlanta's bullpen gave it up in the ninth inning. Five to two Phillies. They defeated reliever Greg McMichael. And Montreal goes three and a half in front with that win in Florida. Pittsburgh in 10. Hal Morris, the second of back to back hits, moving Barry Larkin on to second. And the Reds are trying to get the lead for the first time here in the fifth inning. First base coach Joel Youngblood over chatting with Hal Morris. Kevin Mitchell in this third inning hit as hard a ball as has been hit tonight. Right or wrong, Chris? He hit it hard. You don't agree with that? I don't, I'm not so sure he hit it as hard as Derek Bell hit his home run ball. I see. 
Yeah, I stand corrected. But he hit it hard. That's one of those relative terms. Hard. I'll vote for that. He's strong enough to do it again. 26 home runs. He's hit against this ball club more than any other team in the National League. And he'd love to light up Andy Bennis right here. And a good pitch made by the San Diego right-hander. That's the pitch that Bennis tried to get inside to Mitchell last time, the one he hit the double on. Left it out over the plate. It's a 2-2 game. We're in the top of the fifth. One-out singles by Barry Larkin and by Hal Morris. That looked like a pretty good pitch right there for Kevin to hit. He just got a piece of it. There was a time this year that Kevin Mitchell was probably the worst Reds hitter in driving in runs as far as a batting average with runners in scoring position. Changed quite a bit, has Boy, it sure has. He's up to 293. Most of all the Reds lineup were up over 290 at one time. Many of them have now fallen below that mark, but Mitchell continues his climb and productivity with men on base. Cream always rises. Yeah. Man is a fine, fine hitter. Bennis realizes the task that has confronted him here with Larkin at second, Hal Morris at first, and one out. He jumped ahead in the count against Mitchell. And now the catcher, Brian Johnson, the rookie, will go out and talk with his pitcher. Good idea by Johnson right here. If he's unsure at all as to how Bennis wants to go after Mitchell, better to take a timeout, talk it over, than go through the guesswork back there. Nothing frustrates a pitcher more than have a catcher go back and have to go through a whole series of signs before you get to the pitch that you want, especially since there's a man at second base and they've got to give some extra signs so that they throw this, the, the runner off. White Sox took over first place in the AL Central all by themselves. Today they won and the Indians lose again to New York. Souvenir back in the seats. Kevin Mitchell with a one ball, two strike count and holding. Bennis in trouble with two on and one out. Indecision there by Bennis. He oh, liked, uh, what causes that, Chris? Well, I, mean, I think that he uh, you like to go along with what the catcher suggests right there, but Bennis, as he started into a stretch, he, he decided goes, yeah. that he, he wants something else. He says, now go through him one more time, Brian. I want to make sure that I'm throwing you the pitch you expect. Is this because of a young catcher behind the plate? I mean, this kid's up for the first time in the big league. I would think that Bennis has an idea of what he wants to do, and Brian Johnson doesn't know what Bennis does want to do. That ball's hit way back in left center. It's gone. That pitch looked down and away from Kevin Mitchell, and boy, he ripped that ball over the left center field fence into the first row of seats. A big three-run home run. Number 27 for Mitchell, and the Reds lead 5-2. After all that indecision by Brian Johnson and Andy Bennis, they finally decided on the breaking ball. That's what Kevin Mitchell was looking for, and we'll take a look at his swing. Ball was down around the knees, but out over the middle of the plate. That ball was lashed pretty good. Yeah, I say so. So two of them, the Reds have shot out of here tonight. This guy had the first one. Davey Johnson was talking as you look in the Reds' dugout about his batting order tonight and how he was going to move Brett Boone up behind Kevin Mitchell in the number five spot. He said, Brett Boone is the one guy in my batting order that I can hit anywhere because it's not going to cause him to alter his swing at all. He's going to air it out on every pitch. <laughs> he said some guys, they, they try to change things depending upon where they might be hitting in the order. He said, in Brett's case, I don't have to worry about that. He's probably the most versatile hitter I have in my lineup in terms of batting him one to eight. And that's true. It is. He's out on strikes. Now Brett Boone's home run travels 378. 
feet. MCI proof positive program. Kevin Mitchell 397. And Mitchell a big one to break the tie. Three balls and two strikes now. The count on Brett Boone. Three straight hits after Deion Sanders struck out to start the inning. Single, single home run. Nice hop for Craig Shipley. Activity underway now in the San Diego bullpen. That's the first time we've seen that tonight. Right-hander right Doug Brocale. Reggie Sanders hoping the third time's a charm. Two times up, two strikeouts. ball one strike it's hard to tell from up here Marty how hard a pitcher is throwing but given the way the hitters are reacting tonight it doesn't look like Andy Bennis has his overpowering fastball one that Bob Chandler talked about in the open in those games when he's dominant that one he got go pretty good yeah though. he did did Bob does Bob treat you with a respect that that I treat you with. I mean, the well, first time you'd ever work with I just want to make sure he's treated you right. I've heard your tone to me characterizes other than respect. No, no, you're wrong. But, you're dead wrong. But yes, Bob has been a gentleman and been outstanding with us tonight. Great. Here's a pitch. Like Bobby. Now, I don't know if I know you all touched on a lot of subjects, but if you talked about a particular trade that might have been made sometime in the years past that turned out to be beneficial for San Diego, that's he was being kind. I hope you realize that. <laughs> that's right. Tim Lawler had some good years for this ball club. Rupert Jones had some good years. Yes, for this he club. did. I, well, and even Joe that. LaFay. Joe LaFay, he's a man who, no, Kirk Babaco was a man that Tommy Lasorda could, said couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. One of the great lines of our time. But you know who the key to that trade was? Who's that? You. Uh, Yours truly. Would you believe it if I told you that Michael Jordan hit his first professional home run tonight? Hallelujah. I knew it would happen. How about that? Also double and drove in two, raising his batting average to a hard 189. And speaking of that, number 62, that man celebrates to make that number 66. He'd like it to be 62. The old left-hander on the night in which Michael Jordan hit his first professional home run. And we certainly join in the many hundreds of thousands in what we know as Reds country and wishing that man a most happy and prosperous birthday. The true living legend in the city of Cincinnati. Oh, no doubt about it. I've often said they talk about Pete Rose when it comes to popularity and never anybody in the 21 years that he and I've worked together have I ever heard anyone say anything negative about him. He is the true living legend in that town. But I must say that your star is rising as a youngster and everything is relative but well, first of all thank you for saying that I'm a youngster well you are well you know I get the benefit of, of being with you in the booth here during the broadcast here we go Joe you know what out that means the right course. there there you go again <laughs> I'm not sure what that means you're doing it to me again see you can learn more on the golf course from him than you can sitting up here with me <laughs> Although I must say that there were some serious charges leveled against Joe's partner Doug Spreen yesterday. Huh? If if we you had catch a, me? Yes, I do. Let's just say that we're lucky there wasn't a PGA official out there. <laughs> and Doug Spreen got upset <laughs> because I ran it by him. And <laughs> I mean, you talk about getting lit up. You know, there there are summer rules and winter rules, and summer rules don't allow you to tee your ball up on a blade of grass. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but that man right there in the foreground was accused of doing it. Runner going. 
And a nice throw by Brian Johnson to knock off Reggie Sanders. But a big fifth for Cincinnati. Three runs, three hits. And after four and a half, the Reds lead by three on Mitchell's home run. Tony Gwynn leading off the bottom of the fifth, and this is our builder square, square by square. If he gets on base, the pitcher wins. If he strikes out the batter, or if an out is made, the first fielder to handle the ball wins. Our builder square, square by square play of the game. Tony Gwynn has fly to left and fly to left again. John Smiley has been staked to a three-run lead on Kevin Mitchell's 27th of the season. And it's 0-2 on Gwynn. Hey, can I give you a stat on Tony Gwynn? No. Oh, can you? Oh, is that, I thought you said, did you get you, you locked me up there for a second. When there's nobody on and nobody out, Tony Gwynn is batting 527. Nobody on and nobody out. And that's what we have right here. Yes, we do. 527. That's... But you can look at that in a couple of you ways. You certainly which... can. And you know me, I'm going to look at it you are. in the other way. And you're looking at it like, well, that means with men on base, he's not doing so hot. You're right, men in scoring position, he's down to 320. Oh, mercy. So you, you, you tried to pull him Six, quick one on 68 me 68 points below his average. The 320 still will play. Huh? Well, with scoring position and two out, he's down to 286. So now it maybe yeah, he is human after all. To, yes, absolutely right. 527. Going to win his fifth batting title, though. You hear me? The season ends August 12th. Yeah, win it anyway. And a base hit. Take that 530. Ivan Cooper. He is the lucky winner in our Builder Square Square by Square contest because he represented the batter Tony Gwynn who got the base hit. And Ivan Cooper is our winner. Ivan is now eligible for the grand prize to be drawn in September. A trip to baseball heaven. You can enter to play the square by square game in person or by mail. Deadline is August 24th. Stop by Builder Square for all the details. Congratulations to Ivan Cooper on the single by Tony Gwynn. Coop had to feel pretty good when he saw Gwynn coming up representing him. Coop's outside dancing in his front yard right now. Yes. That rascal's kicking back, and I mean big. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Still one nothing. Dodgers leading Houston after two and a half in Los Angeles. Derek Bell, a two-run home run of the first. Boy, you look at the respective schedules of the Reds and the Astros between now and Friday, August the 12th, when the strike apparently is going to take place, unless a contract agreement can be ironed out, which is right now rather unlikely. And there is no doubt that Houston has the decided advantage, at least on paper. The Reds, of course, finish here, then go to San Francisco, go home then to play the Braves four and the Dodgers three. After this weekend series in Los Angeles, Houston goes home right by Hal Morris. Tony Gwynn will go to third, and that ball should have been played and wasn't. And they'll score the base hit, but very playable as far as Morris is concerned. And now they're on the corners with nobody out, and San Diego trying to come back after they spot the Reds a three-run lead. How Morris will tell you that he probably should have had this ball. This is unusual to see Bell hit the ball the other way like that. Got on Morris in a hurry, and you can understand how Morris was probably as surprised as anybody to see the ball come off of Bell that hard opposite way. Oh, well, first and third, nobody out. The batter, Eddie Williams, he's doubled and flied out, and he could tie it up with one swing of the bat, eight home runs. But after this weekend in Los Angeles, Houston goes home for 10 games. And they'll be playing Colorado, San Diego, and San Francisco. They do not play another road game after Sunday. Go home beginning Monday and play right up uh, through August the 11th. That's a uh, pretty cushy schedule considering playing at home. Colorado, San Diego, and the Giants. Considering how tough they are to beat in the Dome. That's right. While the Reds have the Giants the Braves and the Dodgers although seven of those ten games will be played at Riverfront 
And the Rockies going in there without Andres Galarraga. That's exactly right. Strike two call. And of course, the Reds are not going to see any patsies in pitching when oh, they go no. up in San Francisco. No, Those sir. Swift, Burkett, and Buddy Bud Black. Black. That's right. Three straight day games. Not in time. Stolen base for Derek Bell is 22nd of the season. Derek Bell gets a pretty good jump right here, but Tobinsy gets the ball. Looks like he looks to third base, takes an extra second right there before he gets the ball to second. I don't know if that would have made a difference or not on the play. Bell was a pretty good base dealer. So a ball and two strikes on uh, Eddie Williams with runners now at second and third. But talking about pitching, the Reds took a, a burden off the mind of John Smiley. That is Davey Johnson and, and pitching coach Don Gullett before the game. Apparently, John was very concerned about it coming back on the fourth day in San Francisco on Wednesday. But after watching John Roper throw in the bullpen before the game, Davey and Don Gullett decided that uh, they would not bring John back on the fourth day, but would rather start John Roper against Bud Black Wednesday in San Francisco, which means now that Smiley, as you look at the pitching coach in the foreground, Davey Johnson in the background, Smiley will pitch the opener against the Braves at Riverfront next Friday night. Almost got him to chase a bad ball. Of course, John Smiley with elbow surgery last year had some tenderness in the shoulder earlier this year, and he's a power pitcher. Right. Oftentimes, power pitchers have a much more difficult time going on three days rest than than their sinker balling counterparts. He went. They ruled that he chased that pitch in on him. The plate umpire Terry Tata did, I think. Yeah, he signaled strike. And now Eddie Williams openly questioning Tata's decision on that pitch, but he's out on strikes and Smiley gets a big, big strikeout. I yes, say it's did. a pretty good call yes, by Terry Tata. So a big strikeout against Eddie Williams, only the second of the night for John, and here's Phil Clark. Five to two Reds here in the fifth inning. Second and third, one out. Clark is single and flied out. And he swings and he misses. Of course, those of you who might be wondering about the, the well-being of John Roper, who had to come out of the game against uh, Houston on Wednesday at Riverfront after six innings of a four-hit, one-run ball, Davey Johnson and Don Gullett said that his problems arose out of poor mechanics. And they got him straightened out, said he threw the heck out of the ball in the bullpen today and had no problem whatsoever with his shoulder. That's the reason why they opted to stick him back in the rotation on Wednesday against the Giants. Broken bat number. Brett Boone will get it. And two away in the inning. And John Smiley working on a pretty good comeback right now. Winning pitchers usually have a way to turn it up a notch when they get in trouble. John Smiley looks like he's added a few miles to his fastball this inning with man on second and third. Nobody out. Gets a strike out of Eddie Williams and a saw job right here to Phil Clark. Right in his kitchen. Oh, a strikeout, a pop up after they had runners at second and third. And here's Craig Shipley, and he's hit the ball in the air both times tonight to center and to short. You get two big outs. You're one away from doing a heck of a job to get out of the inning, and you give up a two-run double. It wasn't a mistake pitch by John Smiley. It wasn't a let-up at all, but just good hitting by Shipley. This ball, even though it was down the middle of the plate, Shipley lines it right inside the line. Nothing you can do to defense that, and it is deflating. 
you work hard to get out of the inning, but there's three outs of the inning. John's still not out of it. He faces a rookie, Brian Johnson. That's the 13th double this year for Craig Shipley. Running his RBI total to 25, and it's a 5-4 to four game. So Kevin Mitchell, it's a three-run homer in the top of the inning to break a 2-2 tie. San Diego has come back to within one, and they're a base hit away from tying it up. Starting pitching has been so very good of late. But John Smiley struggling tonight. This one coming back just below our TV booth. Brian Johnson, a one-time New York Yankee farmhand. Who last year tore up the Coast League at Las Vegas. Got the call up earlier or since the last time these two teams got together our first look at Brian Johnson time call now by Smiley he wants a new baseball from Terry Tata we talked about Johnson being two sports star at Stanford three time California athlete of the year Good pitch. The change got him looking. The inning is over, but they close to within one. The Padres do. And at the end of five, it's a 5 4 Cincinnati lead. Now with Chris Welsh and Bob Chandler, Marty Brenneman back at San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium as we move to the sixth inning. It's a one run game. It was tied. The Reds were up three, and, and now it's 5 4 Cincinnati. And this is Jeff Branson, who's 0 for 2 tonight, but was robbed on a fine play by Eddie Williams. Leading off the fourth. Around the plate, Brian Johnson. You know, Marty, interesting just statistic about Andy Bennis. That brings us to our stat sing stat of the day. He leads the National League in strikeouts and losses. Do you know the last pitcher who led the National League in strikeouts and losses? name that we're all familiar with Mario Soto no Nolan Ryan mercy 1976 Nolan Ryan had 327 K's and 18 losses 1976 that's a while back you were a baby then mercy You had long hair. I had more hair. <laughs> but let me be accurate about that. <laughs> People try to avoid standing behind me because that glare kills them. <laughs> I blinded four people in the last two years. That glare hitting <laughs> off the top of that dome of mine. You hear me? Our stat sing stat of the day. Yeah. I say the strikeouts are overrated. You would? Well. You know, if you can lead the league in strikeouts and lead the league in losses. You know how bad that team was Nolan Ryan was pitching for in 1976? Was it any worse than the team that Andy Bennis is pitching for this year? Well, he's going to probably lose 18 games. You can book that. Well, he's certainly on a pace to if the strike doesn't hit. That's his fourth strikeout. Noted, duly noted up there. Stop by any Cincinnati area Boston Chicken now through August 7th and pick up your entry for the Boston Chicken Tailgate Contest. You could win a delicious meal for 20 as well as 20 tickets to a game. No purchase necessary, but don't miss out on a chance for great food and great fun in the Boston Chicken Tailgate Contest. Boston Chicken, the freshest thing going. I gotta tell you about the fine chicken I had tonight. Shared some with Jesse Jackson, Randy Jones. Remember, 19, mm. speaking of 1976, a Cy Young Award winner in the National League was Randy Jones. He started 40 games, completed 25 of them. As a barbecue stand in the stadium, right, right behind center field, does a great job. And uh, well, you know, Jesse's motto has always been, "If it's free, it's me." So yeah. I'm sure. You all went down there and got something gratis. No, it was not. Can you believe it wasn't gratis? 
But it was the second night in a row that Jesse Jackson. Then you went into your pocket. There. You went into your pocket then. <laughs> Those moths fly out of Jesse's when he goes in there. Cobwebs. Mercy. 2 2 pitch. And that's the inning. The first one, two, make that the second one, two, three inning of the night for Bennis. And they came against the same trio. Reds five, Padres four. Statistics for today's game have been provided in part by Stats Inc., the nation's leading supplier of statistics for sports. For information on all of Stats Inc.'s books and products, including stats online, call 1 800 63 Stats. Now well, John Smiley working with a one run lead now here in the sixth inning facing Gutierrez then the pitcher then the leadoff batter he hit Ricky with an 0 and 2 pitch the last time up. That is the 79th pitch that John Smiley has thrown. Then it's on deck and we would have to assume he'll stay in the game. He'll go to the mound of the seventh having thrown 93 pitches. Neither of these guys being very efficient. They said. That's 93 pitches for Bennis with one inning being a three pitch inning. That's right. Friends, make your backyard grill out a very simple task with JTM quarter pound hamburgers, the third pound pure beef burger, or the 100% boneless pork ribs. Enjoy your cookouts the easy way with JTM. Grill them, you'll love them. Andy Bennis will be asked to put down it. Well, why, why was that so astute? I mean, it goes, it's, it's an auto, automatic that if, Guti, if Gutierrez gets on base, Bennis is going to be bunting. This is definitely a bunt situation for well, Bennis. You almost broke your arm patting yourself on the back. I mean, Ashley could have called this shot. I mean, I would have to, I would ha I have to say that you are one of the more astute observers of this game of baseball. Your insight has brought the game of baseball vividly to thousands on our Reds television network the last two years. Morris had a notion on that to go to second base. Second base Roberts. Well, I'll tell you what, one thing about Jim Riggleman's Padres, they have played, with the exception of Biff Roberts fielding tonight, good fundamental baseball. They've been able to move the runners over to third base. So what is that, the fourth or fifth sacri a successful sacrifice? by the pitcher in the series. Reggie runs it down. And the runner goes to third. So Tony Gwynn will be at the plate. Gutierrez was going halfway right there. Wasn't sure if Sanders was going to catch up to it. Had to go all the way back to second. It gave that ball a ride. So here's Tony Gwynn. And Tony, one for three tonight after flying out to left. His first two trips to the plate, he singled into right in the fifth inning. Tying run at third, two out. And Tobinsey will go out for a visit. And so will Don Gullett. Gullett was out of the dugout quite a bit before Tobinsey started to go to the mound. Ruffin is up in the bullpen. He doesn't look like he's anywhere near ready yet. And I don't think that this is a buying time visit no. by Don Gullett. This is a visit to say, hey, don't forget who's up there. Tony Gwynn, 388 average. He's already got a hit off you tonight. Don't give him anything that he can hit. But the problem with saying that about Tony Gwynn is you don't know what Gwynn can hit and what he can't hit. He's a good high ball hitter. He's a good low ball hitter. And inside and out as well. Not only does he have a comfortable lead in terms of leading the league in hitting, but he has a comfortable lead in multi-hit games. But... Smiley makes a pitch, and they lead the tying run at third. Bob Chandler will be joining Chris again to take you the rest of the way through six. Reds lead by a run. Hello, everybody. Bob Chandler back with Chris Welsh, top of the seventh inning. Uh, tight ball game. Reds leading the Padres five to four, and Andy Bennis will go after the top of the Reds order. Deion Sanders, Barry Larkin, Hal Morris. And a strike to Dion. 
you know, we premiered the game before the game, Bob, and talked about this pitching matchup between John Smiley and Andy Bennis, two of the better pitchers in the league. You didn't think that we'd have the kind of 5-4 score here in the, actually, the, through the fifth inning that we have. We've, we've seen some offense. Nine runs, 16 hits. Ten hits by the Padres. 1-1 one, one pitch. Dennis has it, and we'll get him at first. So Deion Sanders is out, first out in the seventh inning. And the hitter, Barry Larkin. And it seems to me, Chris, that both pitchers have gone through trends. I mean, they look sharp one inning and not so good the next. Well, Bennis certainly, you know, he's up around 100 pitch mark now, and that includes an inning where he had three pitches. So Bennis has been hot and cold. Smiley as well. Smiley had pitched his way through a couple of innings where he looked like he was going to cruise, and then all of a sudden, Ben got on base. He hasn't walked anybody as yet, but he, he's been wild enough in the strike zone that the Padres have had pretty good wood on him. Barry Larkin goes after the first pitch. That's a strike. Generally, Andy starts to fade late in the ball game because he throws so many pitches, but tonight he's looked better the last two innings than he did earlier. I think both these pitchers have stepped it up a notch in the last couple innings. I know when Smiley had men on base, it looked like he threw his fastball harder. And I think Bennis is throwing better, too. That's a good fastball for a strike, and it's 0 2 to Larkin. One of the reasons for that is sometimes a starting pitcher doesn't get his timing down until well into the ball game. The better your timing, the more effortless it is to throw the ball, and thus the, the harder you can throw. 0 2 by Bennis, and he backed him away. There's that inside pitch, and it's 1 and 2 to Larkin. So now you would think he's got Larkin set up for that slider. Let's see if he throws it. Fastball. Can Bell catch up to it? On the warning track, he can. So Larkin gave it a ride, probably about 390 feet. But Derek Bell made the play. And a reminder that Cincinnati Reds baseball is brought to you by your local Lincoln Mercury dealers who invite you to test drive the 1994 Mercury Villager. The minivan that drives like a car and comes with versatile seven-passenger seating. Two outs in the seventh. Five-four Reds. Here's Hal Morris. Bouncer to Eddie Williams. To Andy Bennis. And even though Larkin gave the ball a ride, still a fairly easy inning for Andy Bennis. The Reds go down in order, and after six and a half, it's five-four Reds. And we're back with a new pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds. Right-hander Johnny Ruffin picks up for John Smiley. There you see the numbers on Johnny's in his 45th game, six and two on the year, pitching the last the three of the last four games and five of the last eight. When you're hot like Ruffin is, you'll see a lot of action. Celebrated his 24th birthday yesterday. And a swing and a miss by Derek Bell. It's been a birthday weekend for the Reds. The other day, Marty Brenneman celebrated a birthday. Today, it was Joe Nuxall's birthday. Ooh. Radio broadcasting voice of the Reds. Those guys are taking care of this weekend. Johnny Ruffin also gets one in. So Bell had homered and singled off of uh, John Smiley. Ground ball to short. Barry Larkin has it and gets him at first. Smiley had thrown 83 pitches in six innings, so really not that many. He struggled early on. It looked like he got his fastball as the game went on, but John has had some tenderness in his arm, and they want to give John a little bit of a blow before he goes out and pitches again, although he's going to have a six days rest before his next start. He got a good bullpen like the Reds do. You're not afraid to use it, and Davy Johnson managing like it is winding down towards the end of the year. That's why you see so many pitching changes, and he likes to bring in the fresh arms. A ball one to Eddie Williams, who has doubled in three at-bats tonight. He drills one to left center field, and he's got a tie game. now on the year. Hit a ball hard in the first inning off of John Smiley, a double. That ball in, the, in his first inning was nothing like the wallop he just gave this ball out of here. 
Look at the swing. He keeps uh, the leg kick, keeps his bat back. You talk about uncorking one. This ball is launched. Well, I'll bring on Phil Clark, who takes the ball. Well, Eddie Williams has hit those nine home runs in just a month and a half. He was leading the Pacific Coast League in home runs when the Padres called him up from Las Vegas. Good breaking ball, and it's one ball, one strike. And, uh, Chris, the Padres are going to make sure they canvas all the winter recreational leagues this year. <laughs> you never know what kind of talent they're going to turn up. If they can bring up some more players like Eddie Williams, it'll do them some good. Ball two, high and inside. It's two and one to Phil Clark. Well, we've seen some rockets tonight. Derek Bell's homer in the first. Fred Boone to the opposite field in the third. That's a strike two and two. Kevin Mitchell's drive the left center in the fifth. And the ball Williams hit was similar to the ball Mitchell hit. Stays alive as the foul tip went in and out of the mid of that Taubin C. So it's a 5-5 tie, bottom of the seventh inning. Padres led 2-0. Reds tied it. Reds led 5-2. Padres pulled it within 5-4. And now on the home run by Williams, it's a 5-5 tie. Fouled off by Phil Clark. Clark to be followed by Craig Shipley here in the seventh inning. That's the ball, three and two, and now uh, John Smiley will have nothing to do with this ball game. Gave up four runs on ten hits in his six innings. Hit a batter, but didn't walk anybody. And struck out three. Three-two pitch. And he walked him. Let's pause 10 seconds now for station identification. This is the Cincinnati Reds Television Network. You're watching Reds Baseball on your mountain television, WYMT-TV, Hazard, Kentucky. So here's Craig Shipley with Phil Clark at first, one out of 5-5 time. Chris, we said the home run by Eddie Williams was similar to the one Kevin Mitchell hit. What did they estimate the distance on Mitchell's 397? Yeah. They gave uh, they gave Williams an extra two feet, 399. Oh, that's because he's a hometown that's boy. That's it, Home hometown call. <laughs> that's worth two feet. Well, it was worth a run, and the run tied the ball game up. I have a feeling that we've not seen all the offense we're about to see in this ball game. One ball, no strikes to Craig Shipley, who came through with a clutch two-out double in the fifth. Chase that pitch, one and one. And it looked like John Smiley was going to pitch out of a big jam in the fifth inning. I'm a little bit surprised by the hook Davy Johnson gave John Smiley. And a look at Eddie Williams. Eddie Williams glad that change was made. He had his way with Johnny Ruffin. One and two to Craig Shipley. Bill Clark not a running threat. He'll not run most likely unless it's a hit and run play. Could have been that John Smiley was tiring. Maybe he showed some shoulder fatigue and he wanted to make sure that no more further damage has happened to his arm. We'll get the word. Those are the kind of things you don't find out until after the game when you go down to the clubhouse and talk to the coaches, the pitchers, and the manager. But it's now Johnny Ruffin's game. You know, you may not agree with the decision, but they always have a reason for what they do. Well, they, they certainly have more information down in the dugout to go by than we do up here in the booth. The game looks so easy from the second level. Is that a fair ball? No, nope, foul ball. Terry Tater, the home plate umpire, got in position to make that call, and it's a foul ball, so Craig Shipley will come back and do it again as Chuck McElroy gets loose in the bullpen. You know what impresses me, Chris, about the Reds' bullpen? It's almost a totally rebuilt bullpen from last year, and uh, who would have thought it would be as effective as it's been with uh, Outlaw Dibble? Well, you know, it's a bullpen that really came from outside the Reds' organization for the most part. And you've got to really hand it to the scouting department of the Reds and Jim Bowden, the general manager, to be able to go out and acquire the pitchers that he's able to acquire. He has a bullpen full of great arms. 
One two pitch, a drive to right center field. This is hit well. Can Dion get it? No. It'll go to the wall. Bill Clark will score. Shipley's heading for third. Stand up triple and a 6-5 Padre lead. Shipley has his fourth triple. Shipley goes the other way with this one again. He went the other way against Smiley. This time in the gap for a second. It looks like Sanders can catch up with it just beyond his glove. He gets up in a hurry, and the Shipley ends up at third with his good speed. Drives in the go-ahead run with Phil Clark, and with one out, the Padres have scored two. Well, Shipley's knocked in three runs tonight, but that's a very big run at third, and the Reds bring the infield in with Brian Johnson at the plate. And that's a strike. Johnson is hitless tonight. He's driven in 14 runs this year. Limited play. Takes a ball and the count is even. Generally in a spot like this, the Padres will have the runner at third, especially somebody with Shipley speed, running on contact. He'll break for the plate as soon as the ball is hit. Even with the infield drawn. Has Jim Regelman done much in the way of a suicide squeezes this year? A few. Fouled away, and it's one ball, two strikes. There's Riggs. He got surprised last week when the bases were loaded with one out, or with two outs, and Louis Lopez dropped a bunt down the third baseline. He's probably not the only one that was surprised. <laughs> the opposition wasn't surprised. They threw the runner out of the plate to end the inning. Ground ball to the left of the third baseman. Coming to the plate is Branson, and out. Craig Shipley. So he was running on contact. I can't understand that play. When you're in command out there, you're only 90 feet away from scoring a, a little bit of an insurance run. The score already 6-5. to five. This ball right to Jeff Branson at third base. He's drawn in. He's got Shipley at home. No problem. Shipley doesn't even attempt to knock the ball out of Taubensey's hand. And I question that base running by the Padres. But it works for the Reds' benefit. So here's Ricky Gutierrez with Johnson at first and two outs. 6-5 San Diego, and that's a ball to Ricky. Sixteen thousand five hundred fifty-three watching this game tonight. And Gutierrez takes the ball 2-0. Padres may have been figuring that if they hold the runner at third, that'll be the second out. The Reds will walk to Terrace and go after the pitcher, Bennis. So they'll take their chances with Shipley breaking for the plate and hope that the Reds make a mistake. They didn't. Drive to center. Deion Sanders is there, and that's the final out of the inning. So Ricky hit the ball hard, but right to Deion. Padres, though, pick up a couple of runs in the seventh. And now after seven innings of play off the birth in San Diego, it's the Padres six, the Reds five. Well, look at this. Fans of the Reds broadcast crew are everywhere. Well, fans of the Reds are everywhere. The Glazers from St. Mary, Ohio, they didn't forget Joe and Marty's birthday. They and Joe and Marty have been together for 20 years. Last year, they celebrated that momentous anniversary with a, a big day down at Riverfront and the finest broadcasting duo in the business. Here's Kevin Mitchell. Doesn't get the first pitch. Strike one. Certainly he got the pitch in the fifth inning with two on and one out, a three-run homer. Also doubled in the third. He represents the tying run. And his action in the Padre bullpen and a new San Diego left fielder. This is high. One ball, one strike. Mitch with 11 hits off Andy Bennis. Five of them home runs. Padres make a defensive change in left. Phil Clark out of the ball game, and Billy Bean is now playing left. Didn't get that outside corner. Two and one to Mitch. Three and one. Six 
So this could be a big pitch coming up here. Got that corner that time, and now the count's full, three and two. That's the kind of respect Kevin Mitchell commands of pitchers around the league, even a pitcher with the fastball of Andy Bennis. A 3-1 count, traditionally a good hitting count. Bennis decides to go with the breaking ball. He figures there if he misses, the worst that's going to happen is ball four. And the full count pitch to Kevin Mitchell. Ground ball to shortstop. And Ricky Gutierrez throws out Kevin, and Andy Bennis heaves a sigh of relief. So Gutierrez has had a good night. And Bennis trying to complete this ball game. He has five more outs to go. Padres leading Cincinnati six to five. Brett Boone the hitter in action in the Padre bullpen. Ball one to Boone. Well, if the Reds are going to come back and win this ball game, it'll be the 32nd time out of their it would be their 60 wins that they would come from behind to win. 53 percent of their wins right now have been comebacks. One and one to Boone. I have to believe that part of that is the bench. I think the Reds have uh, one of the best benches in the National League. Well, one thing that Davey Johnson left spring training with this year was the notion that you build a championship on a bullpen and a bench because you know what you have pretty much so anyway in your everyday players. You're going to have horses that can run for you, horses that can hit, and of course the starting rotation that can pitch. But the intangibles that those reserve players bring you and of course the job that your relief corps does is going to be so important down the stretch. And Last night was the perfect, for instance, with Tony Fernandez gone on maternity leave. Jeff Branson fills in and hits a home run in his first at bat. But that is the kind of performance that those bench players have given the Reds all year long. That's one ball, two strikes to Boone. And you're talking about the bullpen. Now, the Padres got to Johnny Ruffin in the seventh inning. But the thing that's impressive to me about the Reds' bullpen is that it's strong all the way through. I mean, you bring in guys in the middle of a ball game, they're strong. How many teams can say that? Well, that's pitching inside, two and two to Brett Boone. That is the purpose pitch from Andy Bennis. Boone leaning out over the plate to hit the home run the first time up. So that's a message that says, don't lean anymore. And he gets him with the slider. For Andy Bennis, that is his sixth strikeout, and now Andy has retired the last eight batters he's faced. Well, he is getting stronger and stronger as this game go has gone on. All of a sudden, it looks like something's clicked in Andy Bennis' delivery, and he seems to have found his timing. Really started after the three-run homer by Kevin Mitchell, and he could have gone either way. And instead of giving up, he got tougher. Fastball for a strike to Sanders. Of course, a lot of trade rumors surrounding Andy Bennis over the last year or so with some of the high priced ball players being shipped out of San Diego. One and one the count to Reggie Sanders. Venice and Gwynn pretty much untouchables however especially with the potential of a, the club being sold. Yeah, I would say Gwynn is an untouchable. There's a foul and it's one and two. <laughs> okay. I think uh, Andy's future in San Diego could depend on uh, new ownership. And a one-two to Reggie Sanders. Two and two. Andy has struck out Reggie twice tonight. Reggie walked in the fifth and then was thrown out stealing. In a one-run ball game, you look at the Reds' ball club from the other side and you think a guy like Reggie gets on, he can steal second, a single can tie it. Here's the pitch, and Andy Bennis strikes him out for the third time tonight. And he has his seventh strikeout, and it's his fourth in the last three innings. Tonight's game is brought to you by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. By your local Lincoln Mercury dealers. By JTM Quality Frozen Meats. Grill them, you'll love them. And by your local 76 dealers who invite you to go with the spirit, the spirit of 76.
Reds 5, and a 1994 Reds Farmers Night is coming up on Saturday, August 6th, when the Reds and Braves square off at 8.05. Lucky ticket holders have a chance to win great prizes like subscriptions to Reds Report, thanks to Komen Publishing Company. A getaway weekend at Cincinnati's Hyatt Regency Hotel, steel chainsaws, compliments of Brian Equibin, and the ever-popular Rolo Tape Measuring Wheel. The Reds Farmers Night is a great pregame fun and a chance to win great prizes, and it comes up on Saturday, August 6th at 8.05. Postcard entries are accepted. Arky Sinfraco is batting for Andy Bennis here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And Chuck McElroy is on the mound for the Reds. McElroy will bat sixth. And the Reds have a new right fielder, Brian Hunter. And he'll be the number three hitter in the top of the ninth for Cincinnati. Sinfraco takes the strike, and it's 0-2. Arky opened the season as the Padres' regular third baseman. But he just didn't hit enough. Padres sent him down to Las Vegas. And called him up just a couple of days ago. Fouls that one away. And it's one and two. So we were talking about the depth in the Reds' bullpen. The Padres don't have that kind of depth, but they feel if they can get to the eighth inning, they can use left-hander Pedro Martinez and right-hander Trevor Hoffman. Well, Hoffman has got probably one of the best fastballs or combination of stuff in the league. He's a former Reds farmhand, and Sifrocco right here gets a base hit to lead the inning off. So Arkey a pinch hit single. Well, Gene Harris was the Padre closer last year, but he basically lost his job to Trevor Hoffman this year, and Hoffman will come on, I'm sure, in the ninth inning after his 16th save. Well, I say I'm sure, actually, with Jeff Branson and Ed Taubin see two left-handed batters starting it off. It could be Pedro Martinez who will start off the ninth inning. Here's Biff Roberts, and he takes a ball. It's a one-run ball game. Padres leading six to five in the bottom of the eighth. It's also a one-run ball game up at Dodger Stadium. Los Angeles leading Houston one to nothing in the sixth. So Biff swinging and missing, and it's one and one. Pip a couple of doubles tonight is also grounded out and lined out. And you know the Padres would love to add on at least one insurance run here in the eighth if they can. Hot shot that is past the diving boom. Sinfraco will stop at second. And we talked a lot about the Reds bullpen, but tonight the Reds bullpen hasn't gotten the job done. Johnny Ruffin roughed up for a couple of runs in the seventh, and now back-to-back -back singles here in the eighth of Chuck McElroy, and that's Hector Carrasco loosening up on the bullpen for Cincinnati. One of the dangers you have when you always replace your starting pitcher with a reliever, no matter how good your reliever is, is that you begin to change the energy of the ball game. Right-hander Scott Service joins Hector down in the bullpen. When you change that energy, strange things can happen, and the Padres have something building. Tony Gwynn at the play, two on, nobody out. And the ball gets past Carbonsi. The runners move up 90 feet, and that will likely be a wild pitch on McElroy. So the Padres get a break there. Looks like a breaking ball or a fork ball that just goes right down in the dirt. No way Carbonsi can go over there and get his body in front in time. The swipe with the glove not able to pick it clean. So that moves the runners up and presents a problem. Or maybe it doesn't present a problem for Davey Johnson. You figure naturally with Tony Gwynn up that the only place you're going to put him with a base open is on first base with an intentional walk. Well, Tony, probably the best contact hitter in baseball. Strikes out about once every 24, 25 times up, and he will get the intentional pass. How about the best hitter in baseball? Well, his batting average would indicate that, huh? So he will get the intentional pass. Much to the disgruntlement of the fans here in Jack Murphy Stadium, all 16,553 booing this move by Davey Johnson. Sound baseball move by uh, Davey, but frustrating to the Padre fans who, of course, want to see Tony swing a bat. And here comes Davey Johnson. With the right-handed batting, Derrick Bell and Eddie Williams coming up. David Johnson bringing the hook with him. 
Looks like he's going to bring Hector Carrasco in from the bullpen. Hector's had enough time to warm up. Didn't like what they saw of, it, of Chuck McElroy. So Chuck is gone. Hector is in. Davey Johnson with the pitching change. Stay with us in the eighth inning. It's 6-5. Padres over the Reds on the Reds Television Network. So the Padres have out hit the Reds 14-6 to tonight, but have just a one-run lead right now, 6-5. to five. However, base is loaded with nobody out. And up at Dodger Stadium, Los Angeles hanging on to a one-run lead over Houston. The Reds with a half-game lead over the Astros in the Central Division, and the Dodgers needing to win that game to stay in first place in the Western Division. Well, just new alignment really puts, makes a lot of scoreboard watching going on. And, of course, the strike looming ahead. Scoreboard watching in earnest. Right now we're watching Hector Carrasco in his 40th game, 4-6 and six record, sparkling 206 earned run average. He's been outstanding lately in his last 14 relief appearances in July. A .96 earned run average. Playing throwing right-hander who pitched an A ball last year. And here's Derek Bell. Breaking ball misses. And now we get a lead word from Los Angeles. The Astros have tied the Dodgers. It's 1-1 one one in the sixth inning. Shot to Boone. He comes to the plate. That's one, and that's all. Well, normally, you'd think when you get a ground ball like that with bases loaded that it would be a good double play opportunity, but with the infield drawn in, Barry Larkin not in a position to get the second base in time to turn two. So Boone comes home to cut off the sure run at the plate. Obviously, does not throw to first base. I thought he had a chance down there at first. I think he may have been a little bit afraid of hitting the runner in the back going down the line. Gary Bell does run very well. So the bases remain loaded, one out, and now it's up to Eddie Williams. Eddie, a very good fastball hitter. He uses that left leg, which he lifts as kind of a timing device. Takes the ball. Base runner at third, Pip Roberts, excellent speed. Tony Gwynn is at second, Derek Bell at first. So the Padres are a team without a lot of speed, but the three runners on all run well. Good pitch by Carrasco, and it's one ball, one strike. Williams looking for the fastball right there. Carrasco missed with a first pitch breaking ball, and he was guessing heater all the way. Hector pulled the string and threw him the, the old slide Johnson. Missed with the breaking ball, and now it's two and one. Outfield deep, straight away for Eddie Williams. Now the infield, a double play depth, and the two one pitch. Bouncer, it is fouled on the third baseline. And it's two and two. So this is the spot where Carrasco would. Number one, like a double play grounder. Number two, like that strikeout. A left-handed hitter, Billy Bean, is on deck. And a very tough hitter as well. Bean, a good fastball hitter. Carrasco liked the double play ball. Larkin and Boone back at double play depth. Fouled off by Eddie Williams, and that was a pretty good pitch by Carrasco. We saw a game right now. The Padres with two runs in the bottom of the seventh took a 6-5 lead, and that's where we stand. The Reds in the ninth do to send up Branson, Taubensey, and Hunter. Foul ball to third. Branson goes to Boone. Boone goes to Morris. It's a 5-4-3 double play, and what a job by Carrasco. Base is loaded, nobody out, and Carrasco pitched out of the jam. So now we go to the ninth. It's still 6-5 Padres. Cincinnati Reds Baseball, sponsored on WYMT by Perry Distributors Incorporated, Cardinal Chevrolet Cadillac Geo, Jim Hammond, Attorney at Law, Ferris Marine, Best Quality Ford Dealers, Hardware Charlie, Witt Motor Company, Childers Oil Quick Barts, North Star Marketing Incorporated, and Middlesbrough Coca-Cola Bottling Works. Five in the ninth, and Jacob Brumfield 
will come up and bat for Jeff Branson as the Padres brought in a left-hander Pedro Martinez to start the ninth inning. Pedro's really shows some promise, Bob, and you'd probably know that as well as anybody, but a good hard-throwing left-handed pitcher, the numbers on him have been outstanding. Three and one on the year, but in his last 11 innings, that covers eight outings, he has not been scored upon. Just three saves, so I... You figure that if he's not in there for the entire inning, you've got Trevor Hoffman still warming up down in the Padre bullpen, ready to go. And maybe the, the most significant statistic on Pedro Martinez in 63 innings, he's given up only 47 hits, and he had a similar ratio last year. Drum field with good speed, pretty good numbers. Martinez generally has good success against right-handed batters. He has a pitch. He calls it a change-up. Others might call it a screwball down and away to a right-handed hitter. And he misses ball one. And oftentimes when a pitcher is like that and has a pitch that he's learned to get right-handers out with and move away from right-handers, when you put a left-hander in there, it makes it more difficult for him because he takes away that best pitch. There it is. That's a strike one and one. Looks like a old fadeaway. Spring training, he worked on a uh, on a curveball to help him get left-handed hitters out because he didn't really have uh, that kind of a breaking pitch. And at times it's been effective, at other times it hasn't. Missed the outside corner, and it's two and one. Brian Dorsett is on deck, another right-handed hitter. That's a strike, two and two. One thing about Martinez so far, he's been right around the knees with everything he's thrown. Randy Smith, the Padres general manager, said uh, last offseason he had more requests for Pedro Martinez than any other player on the Padres. There's that change up, and it's three and two. So full count to Brumfield. Jacob is the tying run. And Bob Boone checking things out with Brian Hunter, who's the number three hitter this inning. The full count pitch. He walked it. So the Reds get the tying run on to start the ninth inning. Padres up by one, six five. And here comes Brian Dorsey. For the Reds, batting for the Patrick Thomas team. Number 33, Brian Dorsey. So we'll see whether Dorsey is up there to punt or not. And now with the announcement of Brian Dorsey, here comes Jim Riggleman. Not exactly what Riggs wanted. He's a left-handed pitcher to go out there and walk the first batter that he saw. Brumfield gets the walk on the 3-2 pitch. Pedro A. Martinez gets out of the game, and what we expected to see, we will see. Former Reds farmhand, former Marlin farmhand, right-hander Trevor Hoffman will come in for the Padres. And the ninth inning here with the Padres ahead, but the Reds are I've got something going. Six to five Padres here on the Reds Television Network. Stay with us. So it's the Padre closer, Trevor Hoffman, coming on in the ninth inning. The tying run is at first base. There's nobody out. San Diego has a 6-5 to five lead. Brian Dorsett is the pinch hitter for Ed Taubensey. And Davey Johnson is going to leave Brian Dorsett in the ballgame to bat. He does have two hitters who could bat left-handed. Lenny Harris, a pure left-handed hitter, and switch hitting Thomas Howard. But right now it's Brian Dorsett and... He might be up there to bunt. Well, once you already make your move with your second catcher, you'd be out of catchers if you took Brian Dorsett out of there. So that's the reason he will bat right there. He forced the hand to Riggleman. Riggleman knows very well that you got Lenny Harrison in the Reds dugout and as well as Thomas Howard. So it'll be Trevor Hoffman, who has 15 saves and 17 off save opportunities for the Padres. Misses with the fastball, and it's 1-0. If there's a knock to Trevor Hoffman, it's not in his stuff, but it's the number of base on balls he has. He's got 20 base on balls in 48 innings. Got the win in the game Thursday night when he pitched two shutout innings, and the Padres got a run in the bottom of the tenth. And he misses there, 2-0. Oh. 
first against the Padres. Eight for 22 with four ribbies. He was uh, in the Padres spring training camp a few years ago. In fact, played for the Padres AAA team at Las Vegas and played briefly for San Diego. Brian has plenty of power. And often keeps an eye on Jacob Brumfield. Trevor is a former infielder. He was converted to pitching from playing the infield, so he's a good fielder. Knows what he's doing on the mound. Fouled away. Dorsett had a big cut. Hoffman's brother Glenn played in for several major league teams, including the Red Sox. He was an infielder, a shortstop. Trade away Gary Sheffield. You better get a pretty good arm in return, and they certainly got that with Trevor Hoffman. Padres got three pitchers in the deal for Gary Sheffield, but Hoffman was the key guy, no question. Popped up foul out of play. The other two pitchers, Jose Martinez pitching at Wichita, the Padres double-A team, and Andres Baruman, the hard-throwing uh, right-hander who's at Las Vegas. Brian Hunter, the on-deck hitter. Often with a fastball that at times has been clocked in the mid to high 90s. Brian Dorsett caught looking, and that's the first out in the ninth inning. So here's Brian Hunter, a newly acquired Cincinnati Red, got him from the Pittsburgh Pirates, and he was asked about having a chance to show what he can do with Cincinnati. No, I really haven't had a chance to play. Maybe just my rookie year for a month and a half, but other than that, you know, I really haven't had a chance to play. Pittsburgh, I thought it was going to be my opportunity. You know, started out pretty pretty nice and ended up pretty bad. So but I'm happy to be here and whatever I can do, and maybe sometime it'll happen for me. Here's the pitch to Brian, and he fouls it away. I know a lot of people have a lot of uh, respect for Brian Hunter as a hitter. Well, one thing that Brian Hunter can do and brings to the table and to the plate every time he comes up there is a long ball. Look at that. Yes, he's only batting 226. This is with the Pirates, but 11 home runs and 47 ribbies. When he hits the ball, it stays hit. And Hunter, or rather Hoffman, continuing to keep an eye on Jacob Brumfield. Brumfield, five stolen bases, caught three times. Deion Sanders is on deck. Fouled away. Hunter had a cut. And it's no balls, two strikes. Power versus power in this standoff. Hoffman firing fastballs. Hunter taking a good rip. When a hitter fouls him straight back the way Hunter's fouled these last two offerings of Hoffman, he's just a hair off, just a little bit late. Now, if the pitcher can turn it up, he can get it by him. If he slows it down, he'll be right on it. 0-2 oh, pitch, driving into left center field. Did he get it? He oh, got it. Two home run. Brian Hunter, welcome to Cincinnati. So Brian Hunter on an 0-2 pitch. It's a two-run homer, and now it's seven to six, Cincinnati. Oh my! You talk about instant acceptance into the clubhouse. That will bring a smile to every one of the red spaces. High fives going around. You now we look back and talk about the constant moves, the fine tuning that the front office and Jim Bowden have done with this ball club. You bring Hunt, Brian Hunter on here. This is exactly why they got Brian Hunter. He can turn a game around with one swing of the bat. He does it here. 
a one-run deficit, now a one-run lead for Cincinnati, 7-6 to six here in the ninth inning. Brian Hunter, an 0-2, two-run home run. Deion Sanders takes a strike, and good news continues for the Reds. It's now 4-1 to one Dodgers over Houston in the sixth inning at Los Angeles. got a chance to make uh, Joe Mexall show, I would think. One one pitch, bouncer towards second base, and Pip Roberts will throw out Deion Sanders. Two gone. 390 feet, the distance on the home run by Brian Hunter. And Davey Johnson pressed the right buttons here in the ninth inning. in the bottom of the ninth due to send up Billy Bean, Craig Shipley, and Brian Johnson. Fouled away by Barry Larkin. Well, if you're just a neutral baseball fan wanting to enjoy an interesting game, you have to enjoy the one tonight. I mean, it's gone back and forth. Been a lot of... Uh, Home runs, been a lot of terrific defensive plays. There aren't any of those in the Reds television network, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about Reds country. That is one ball, one strike. Those who are still awake, anyway. Hey, that's right. I mean, it's late. It's, it's actually it's Sunday morning in Cincinnati. 9.45 Saturday evening in San Diego. In the dirt. And it's two balls and a strike. I don't know if it was a macho thing for Trevor Hoffman or whether he really thought that he was going to get the fastball by Brian Hunter. He did it two times, and I was mentioning the Hunter was fouling the ball straight back. It looked like that the catcher Johnson was sitting on the outside corner looking like he maybe was looking for the breaking ball. We've seen a breaking ball here to Barry Larkin. I wonder why he didn't least throw him a breaking ball to waste the pitch right there. He certainly had plenty of room with an 0-2 count, but he went with the fastball, power versus power. Hunter got it going just a little bit quicker. You turn it up a notch and good things happen. Well, that's a genuine smile. Hoffman has a good breaking ball, and I'm sure there'll be some second guessing by Trevor and Brian Johnson after the ball game. Here's the 2-2. Got it. There's that good breaking ball. So Larkin strikes out. Hoffman gets his second strike out of the inning. But in between, a two-run homer by Brian Hunter, the newest red, and after eight and a half innings, 7-6, Cincinnati. Jacob Brumfield takes over in left field for the Reds. One of three defensive changes Davey Johnson has made. Lenny Harris will take over at third base. And behind the plate, Brian Dorsett. The Reds come on and score two runs in the top of the ninth. Hector Carrasco, who entered the ball game with bases loaded, nobody out, got out of that unscathed, is now the winning, or the pitcher on the winning side of the ledger if the Reds are able to hold on. Bob? And Carrasco will face Billy Bean to start it off in the bottom of the ninth for San Diego. Billy has done a terrific job as a pinch hitter this year for San Diego. This is almost like a pinch hitting situation. He entered the game in the eighth as a defensive replacement. This is his first hit back. So the Padres have out hit the Reds 14 to 7, but the Reds have outscored the Padres 7 to 6. Bottom of the ninth inning. Padres still have Scott Livingstone and Phil Plantier, two left-handed hitters on the bench. Inside ball one to Billy Bean. And the switch hitting Louis Lopez, who could come up and bat left-handed. The only right-handed bat on the bench is Brad Ausmus. Ball two to an out. Carrasco's 2-0 pitch. Ball three. Well, the same thing that Jim Riggleman said when Pedro Martinez walked Jacob Brumfield to open the top of the night. Probably the same words coming out of Davey Johnson's mouth right now. What is going on out there? We give you a one-run lead in the ninth inning. Don't walk the leadoff man. 
a guaranteed problem. And he gets the inside corner, three and one. Of course, important for the Reds is that Bean pinch hitting here in the, in the fifth spot in the lineup. We're quite a ways away from Tony Gwynn. 3-1 pitch, drive into center field, and that's going to drop for a base hit. So Billy Bean gets a solid single to center to start off the bottom of the ninth for San Diego. You know, it may sound funny, but managers will agree, pitchers will agree, and all everybody who's played this game will tell you that they'd much rather see a base hit to open an inning than a walk. Something happens to the energy of the ball game when you open it with a walk. They score about 80% of the time anyway, but a leadoff base hit, at least you made, the, made him earn it, and you're right about Billy Bean. He can come off the bench and hit. You feel like if you walk somebody, you've given something away. You know, if they get a base hit, they, they earned it. They want more, too. <laughs> so here's Craig Shipley, and let's see how Jim Riggerman plays it. He squares to Bunn and does. Carrasco has only one play, plays it to Brett Boone. The sacrifice works. One to four. Billy Bean the second. And now in a 7-6 game, the Reds on top. It's up to Brian Johnson. Catcher, number 28, Brian Johnson. And Jim Ruggerman discussing things with Rob Piccolo, his bench coach. Bill Plantier, you can see him walking by with a bat in his hand. Johnson is 0 for 4 tonight, but he hit the ball hard twice. Takes the ball, 1-0. Oh. Line drive to short. Two hops. Barry Larkin throws him out. So Brian Johnson hit it hard, but right to Barry Larkin. Two gone in the ninth inning, and the Padres are down to their last out. Well, that ball's hit five feet either way. It's a base hit. Johnson hit it like a bullet. Larkin closed in a little bit of second base because the runner, Billy Bean, out there. And it looks like Phil Plantier is swinging a bat, and the Reds is discussing their options. It's a high-level conference going on. So Phil Plantier, certainly with the power to reverse this ball game. Jeff Brandley, who picked up a save last night, loosening in the Reds' bullpen. Plantier has an unusual injury. He swings that bat so hard with that uppercut swing that he hit himself in the left hip enough that he injured that left hip, got a hip pointer. And now he wears a pad there. For a while, it really affected his swing. See Jeff Brantley down in the Reds' bullpen in case this inning begins to get away. His injury right above the belt buckle. He wears a pad there to keep himself from hitting the bat on his hip as he follows through. But he won't be wearing it out too much today. Power versus power. Plantier, a good fastball hitter. Carrasco, he'll probably feed him the fastball. And got the inside corner strike one. Bill, last year, 34 home runs, 100 runs batted in. And it was the month of August that uh, really did it for him. Had 11 homers and 30 RBIs in the month of August. That was last year. Fouled away, and now Carrasco has still cranked here. No balls, two strikes. Well, we hope that Hector learned something from the mistake that Trevor Hoffman gave to Brian Hunter in the top of the ninth inning. An 0-2 fastball hit for a home run. A lot of options open when you're up at 0-2, especially with the base open. Billy Bean, the tying run at second. Two outs. Fouled away by Plantier, who doesn't cheat himself, even with the count 0-2. Huh? Well, you got to generate good bat speed. Plantier's always been a very aggressive hitter, not a guy to go out and take a half swing, try to jab the ball to left field. He's thinking one thing, and that's drive the ball into the gap. Baby Johnson asking for one more strike. 
Archie Sinfranco do up next, but Scott Livingstone, a left-handed batter, is in the on-deck circle. Ryan Dorsett looked like he was a little tentative when he put his finger down right there. He put down the number one, immediately pulled it back, pulled his mask off, and ran out to the mound. He wants to talk to Hector Carrasco and make sure that they have a game plan as to how they're going to go about getting Plantier out on an 0-2 count. No guesswork needs to be involved right here. Take your time, make sure you get on the same page in the same book. What did you like to do 0-2? Waste a pitch or come right after it? I usually waste the pitch. I was never a pitcher that had a good fastball, so I needed to get somebody to chase something. But Carrasco can go right after him. Drive in the left field, but Kevin Mitchell is there. And the ball game is over. So the Cincinnati Reds on a dramatic two-run pinch hit homer by Brian Hunter. Well, not a pinch hit because he had done in the ball game, but a two-run homer by Hunter on an 0-2 pitch. Come from behind in the ninth and beat the San Diego Padres 7-6. We'll be back with you right on the Reds television network right after these messages. Please stay with us. 15 to 7, but the Reds got their hits at the right time, and Chris, that home run by Brian Hunter certainly electrified the Cincinnati bench. Well, I'll tell you what, nice to see Brian Hunter come out as the newest Cincinnati Red. He struck out his first at bat. He's not going to tell anybody about that at bat. He's going to tell them about this 0-2 home run that he hit right here off of Trevor Hoffman. Brian Hunter gets the fish up in the strike zone, fouled a couple of pitches off. Hoffman decides to go with the heat, and this is what Brian does with it. Gets the head out in a hurry over the left field wall. 0-2. That's good for two runs. It makes the score 7-6. And Brian Hunter is our player of the game. Jumped on that high fastball, and he is the Staples player of the game. Brought to you by Staples, the office superstore. Staples with over 5,000 office products at the guaranteed low price. Staples, the office superstore. And right now, Brian Hunter is a superstar in Cincinnati and will be back. We'll wrap up this ball game after this. 